Hey guys, Sean here from visibledark.ca. Thanks for tuning in. We are going to look at uh, the addition of Easy HDR uh, to the Easy Processing Suite, uh, see how it works. And uh, we're also going to look at uh, what I would do um, for using the HDR multi scale transform tool on an image. Uh, now, if you uh, enjoy this video and uh, would like to see more of these videos, please remember to subscribe. If you are a current subscriber, thank you very much for, for doing that and appreciate you following along. Uh, but if you uh, haven't uh, subscribed yet, please uh, hit the subscribe button and the uh, notification bell so that uh, you can be notified of new videos as I put them out. Okay, let's uh, have a quick look at uh, Easy HDR in PixInsight. So HDR, uh, high dynamic range, uh, multi-scale uh, transform has been added to the easy processing suite. Um, you can now find it under here, easy HDR. And uh, let's have a look at it and uh, just see what it does. This image here is a processed image. It, it uh, easy uh, HDR will only work on uh, non-linear images. And uh, so this is a process stretched image that uh, had uh, color calibration done, uh, dynamic background extraction, color calibration, um, it has had noise reduction, and um, it's been stretched and, and so forth. So it's uh, ready for the uh, HDR uh, multi-scale transform now uh, to try and uh, recover some of the core details here which are uh, washed out. Uh, the easy uh, HDR script can do a nice job for you um, if you're looking for a simplistic way to uh, to achieve um, some high dynamic range uh, uh, application to your image and uh, recover core details. This could be this could apply to M31. It could apply to uh, M42 is another example of core details that's often blown out. Uh, M13 is another one um, and so forth. Uh, let's have a look at it here. Um, of course, you're getting the warning message that this uh, plug-in, or sorry, this uh, script is under heavy development and uh, you want to make sure that you save your work. We'll click that we understand. There is instructions on how to use uh, the Easy uh, HDR. And of course, the prerequisites uh, are a nonlinear image. And then the steps involved are setting the blend strength. Uh, this sets how much of the HDR image is blended into the image. And uh, setting the amount of layers that you want. Um, it'll affect the HDR process and the smaller uh, the number, the finer the HDR will be. What Easy HDR is uh, doing, it, it appears to be doing, is creating an HDR image, which it's then um, integrating, blending in to the existing image and um, uh, that can uh, be effective and work well uh, it could be a taste thing too um, for me i'm not uh, I, I don't necessarily want um, the entire image uh, an entire hdr image blended into my existing image um, for certain reasons but um, we'll talk about that in a bit after we look at how easy hdr works so you select your uh, image and in this case here is the, uh, I've, I named it uh, M31 Unstretched, but uh, that was just at the beginning. Um, so just ignore that, uh, that name. And uh, I, uh, I've already stretched this image and, and so forth. The uh, HDR blend modes are selectable here and you can adjust them. Uh, you can play around with this to see what, uh, what works best for your image. Um, and of course, uh, if the... Uh, the lower the number, the finer the HDR is going to be. Um, five seems to be somewhere in the middle. And uh, let's see what uh, this does with the image. Uh, we'll click Run Easy HDR. And the uh, Easy HDR is going about creating um, different masks that are needed in order to achieve this. And this would be the end result. It did apply the uh, HDR to the entire image and um, it recovered some of the core details but not a lot of the core details. So um, for me, I, I'd want to see a little more detail recovered. I could apply, I could maybe do a second round of the Easy uh, HDR and, and see if that helps. But again, it's applying to the entire uh, image. 
and I don't know if that is really what I would want to do. So, um, and we can see here, this is the HDR image that it's blending into the uh, other image. It actually has more core detail here in this one, um, but for me, um, here's how I would do it. Uh, of course, you know what? This is great that the script is under development and new things are being added. Um, I think that's fantastic and uh, things are being refined uh, as we move along in the different uh, uh, versions, the later versions of this uh, easy processing suite. Fantastic stuff by Dark Archon for uh, coming up with this and working on this and uh, making it available for free. Uh, thumbs up on that. Um, let me just show you what I would do uh, in my case though for the um, for this image here in order to um, recover some of the core details. So this is the mask that Easy HDR created and we'll just disable it. And this is the image here before the HDR was applied. What I would do is I'd create a range mask for the core. Um, and you can do that by selecting range selection under mass generation. And I simply move the slider a bit until I have got roughly the core area that I'm looking for. That's about, that's about right there. And I'm just going to basically smooth the entire image so that I'm eliminating a lot of other um, structures that are in the image. I want to focus on the core. And if I make that mask, create the mask by clicking the square blue, the blue square, um, I can close the uh, real-time preview and I can close the range selection. I now have a mask that I can apply to my image and you'll see it's only allowing me to affect the core details. And now I'll turn the, I'll hide the mask. The mask is still active. We can see it's still active. But I'm going to go over and run the HDR multi-scale transform. And the HDR multi-scale transform is what Easy HDR is using. Uh, it's using to create that high dynamic range image that it's blending in to the um, to the existing image. Uh, but in this case here, what I'm doing is I'm being very specific with it. So I've masked out the entire image and I'm only focusing on the core. And if I use HDR multi-scale transform, um, I, can, I can select to lightness and uh, lightness mask. I want those enabled. Since I have a mask already created, I don't need to use the median transform. The number of layers um, will, if, if you increase this number, it will uh, get uh, less aggressive. And if you reduce the number, it will get more aggressive with its um, HDR multi-scale transform application to the image. So we're going to start with six. What we're going to do is make a preview for the core. And we'll simply apply this and see how it looks. Now that's a little too aggressive for me. Some people might like that. Um, I have seen images of M31 that the uh, the core, uh, the HDR um, multi-scale transforms have been applied rather aggressively to the core. And this is a taste thing. Uh, for me, I like a little brighter core than that. So let's uh, bump it up to seven and just see how that looks, if it looks a little better. That's looking a little better. I like that a lot more. And uh, let me just have a look at eight just to see yeah, that's a little too bright, so a little too washed out. So, so seven is definitely the number that we want to work with here. It recovers a lot of the core details so they're not washed out. So let's go back to the, the main image and we'll apply that. Remember, we've got the mask, the core is masked out, so we're only working on this area right here. Now that might not have... No, I'm not sure I like that actually. So let's bump it up. We're going to go back. And let's take it to 8, actually. It looks a little different than the preview did. There we go. That's a little better there. So what, what's happened is 
we've uh, recovered a lot of the core details. I'm just going to turn that mask off. And if we um, have a look, we can see if we go back here. Whoops, I guess that's the ma with the mask on. That's with the uh, that's without the HDR multi scale applied. And that's with the HDR multi scale applied. So you can see that we've got a lot more core details uh, showing up now um, in the uh, the core of the galaxy. It's not so washed out looking. And to me, this is actually uh, I like I like this better. Um, and doing it this way you're applying your hdr multi your hdr multi-scale transform to the image this way is not that difficult to do you're free to use uh, of course you know um you can use the easy processing suite easy hdr it's uh, that's great um i might like to see some refinements in this uh in this uh, script of this part of the script anyways um that would allow me to um control the mask a little more and uh, be a little more specific about how it's applying the HDR uh, image into how it's blending the HDR image into the original image. I'd like to be able to uh, not not have it apply the entire HDR image into or blend it into the existing image, as I said. Uh, rather, I'd like to be specific and just work on the the uh, the core area, the the area that I want to. So I'm not sure um, how feasible that is for. Um, uh, implementation in the uh, easy uh, processing suite under the uh, uh, for the easy HDR uh, but uh, something that uh, that I'd certainly like to see is to be able to get a little more specific about how it's applying things and where it's applying it to so for me um, the easy processing suite is definitely interesting. It uh, certainly takes uh, does a lot of the heavy lifting for you if uh, you're not familiar with how to do deconvolution or denoise or HDR, etc. Um, this certainly would allow you to process an image and uh, do it quickly and easily in Pix and Sight using the the core tools of Pix and Sight, uh, the power of Pix and Sight, but in a very easy um, uh, straightforward way that uh, you don't have to know. Um, you, honestly, you don't have to know what you're, how to do it. Um, easy processing suite will do a lot of the work for you. That's good and bad. Um, that's great that it can do that. But it is important to remember that you should really understand how um, to do these things without a crutch without the the help of something like easy processing suite um, easy processing suite is a tool in itself uh, to be utilized and it could be utilized in different ways um, you could use it to uh, quickly process an image just to see how the night's data went um, how it looks or you could use various components of easy processing uh, suite to complement your workflow um, so if you wanted to make the deconvolution process a little easier, you could certainly use the deconvolution process, the easy decon, and um, and take some of the uh, uh, take some of the the difficulty and the complexity of doing deconvolution manually. Uh, you could take that, um, use the uh, easy decon to achieve that. Same with the HDR. The HDR result by uh, the easy processing suite, as I said, is good. Uh, I'd like to see it a little a little more uh, specific though into the core area, the area that I'm concerned about. So uh, the way that I showed you how to do it works uh, very effectively as you can see and it's not too difficult. You simply uh, create that range mask for the core that uh, or the area that you're concerned about that you need to uh, correct and then you run your HDR multi-scale transform selecting lightness mask and two lightness and adjust the number of layers uh, do do a preview window and do some tests and see uh, the number of layers that work best for your image to recover the uh, the blown out or the washed out uh, area in question okay so comment below right down there and uh, let me know are you guys using the easy hdr and uh, what do you think about it um, are you using easy processing suite uh, and uh, do you like it has it been helpful and uh, is there anything that you'd like to see added to it um, or uh, changed in it? Uh, comment, let me know. Um, I am coming up on 5,000 subscribers. Wow.
incredible. Um, really appreciate everyone that's been following along and, uh, and welcome to the new subscribers, of course. Um, there's going to be uh, something big coming up for uh, hitting 5,000. Uh, when I started this channel, I actually didn't anticipate or think about reaching this high of a number in terms of uh, viewers, but um, here we are um, coming up on 5,000. So if you uh, haven't subscribed yet, you're going to want to subscribe because there's going to be something big coming up to celebrate the uh, 5,000 uh, subscriber mark when I reach that. And uh, uh, stay tuned for that, everyone. Um, and I will uh, be uh, letting you know more more about that uh, in the days to come. Okay, hope everyone's getting some clear skies. We'll see you again. Take care.